here's a page from the Gospel of John. Now, if you didn't notice this, I'm going to show you. It's all in your footnotes. If you've got an ESV like this, it's in your footnotes. Ancient manuscripts about this Gospel of John have it certain ways. For example, here, in your ESV, it says, I am not going up to this feast, for my time has not yet fully come. But there's another early manuscript that is slightly different. The early manuscript that's slightly different says, I am not yet going up to this. Now, granted, this is not a big difference. And even Bart Ehrman would say, no variation between the documents affects the person of Jesus or any theological position of Christianity. They're all like this. Are we clear? Here's another one, same page. ESV says, how is it that this man has learning when he's never studied? Another ancient document, and maybe your translation has the other ancient document, says, knows his letters. It means the same thing, but there are very different ways of saying the same thing. Why does one variation say it one way? Why does one translation say it? It seems kind of willy-nilly. Like, I'll just stick in whichever one I want. There's clearly two different manuscripts that can provide two different pieces of information. Here's another one, same page. If anyone is to do God's will, he'll know whether the teaching is from God or whether I'm speaking on my own authority. There's another ancient manuscript that says his will. Granted, this is not a big difference, but you can see there's three right here. By the way, this is just 25% of that page. So whatever I show you on this page, it's worse by four. I didn't show you this stuff on this side. But when you add it all together, this is why Bart says this in his book. There are more variations among our manuscripts than there are words in the New Testament. And he's right. And it sounds terrible. And it doesn't matter at all. How do we know what Jesus said when you've got variations? Do you guys have iPhones? How many of you have an iPhone? How many of you have an iPhone 14? Losers. <laughs> How many of you have Androids? Pathetic losers, okay? <laughs> Seriously? You think you're different or something? Just pay a little more money and join the rest of us. What's wrong with you people? Anyway, I hate Siri. Do you hate Siri as much as I hate Siri? Siri is a wicked wench. She is a terrible person. <laughs> She takes what I'm saying to her and she twists it. And then she sends it to people like I meant to say that. I got a text from my, my, my daughter-in-law. She's my daughter-in-law now, but she wasn't my daughter-in-law then. I'm about to get my first grandchild from this girl, so I love her very much. But Olivia, she came over for dinner and she texted me and she said, thanks for dinner. She came over with my son to my house. They had dinner. They went and then she sent me this text. So I don't know her. I met her one time. So I thought, I'm just going to text her. I was driving. So I heard the text come in. I had Siri read it to me. I told Siri to text her back. I wanted to text her something benign. I don't know her very well. Looking forward to seeing you soon. That, that's pretty benign, right? Siri does not understand the word Olivia. So she sends this message. That's not good, right? I'm in my 50s. This girl's in her early 20s and she's getting this weird message. She did not respond. And I waited and I got to where I was going and I looked at my phone. Oh my gosh. So I quickly texted her back. We've been laughing about this for 10 years. But I just want you to see that, that that's what Siri does. Siri is evil. Not only that, your phone thinks it knows what you meant to say when you type. And as you're typing, it'll autocorrect your words. Yeah. I hate it too. I'll give you an example of that. Here's my son David. When he was in med school, he's a doctor. He was always broke. And so let's say he needs some money and he's tapped out. And I'm like, I'll okay, tell you what. Uh, this is me. I'll meet you on Star Starbucks. How about the one on Main? At 4 o'clock on Wednesday, I'll bring you $5,000. So I send him a text. But the phone thinks it can correct my text. And this is what he receives. Okay, one of those is my fault. Okay, I hit the wrong. But the rest is not my fault. I didn't say that. I think that's confusing. Okay, there you go. So I'm going to send him a second text. Here's my second text. Much better. Ah, still got one typo. Okay, no problem. I'm, a, I'm particular about these kinds of things. I'll send him a third text. Here's my third effort. Ah, so he's got a good sense of humor, but, but I should probably correct that, right? So let me just correct that. So here we go. 
Oh, now I'm running naked down the street. Correct that quickly. Cover that up. There we go. Ta-da, good. Ah, I still got one. Okay, look. I think at this point, he gets it. But I don't, I don't care if he gets it. My thinking is, you, you have to, I got to get it right. So I'll not just stop at five. I will text the holy dog snot out of this kid until I get it right. So I just keep on sending him texts. He's done with it. You are too, though. What business are we going to meet at? What day? What time? How much money? Where's it located? You think you know, yet you don't have a single inerrant text. As a matter of fact, now you have more variations between the texts than there are letters in the text. Yet you think you know how to return to an original. Why? Because you recognize it doesn't matter how many variations there are. What matters is how many copies do I have? Because if I have an abundance of copies, I can compare them to one another and successfully remove all of the variations. And this is the unbelievable truth about the manuscript evidence. For It's not like the ESV writers are trying to decide between these two manuscripts. Let's toss a coin. Let's put it in this way. No. They are comparing not two manuscripts. Modern translations use all of them in manuscripts. So we can return to the originals accurately. This is why when you say to me, do you believe that the Word of God is inerrant? Yes. I believe the autograph is inerrant. The autograph is the original. We don't have the original. But I believe we have a process in place to return reliably to the inerrant original. And that takes the confusion out of it. Yes, we know what the Gospels say because we've got so many copies.